the American Broadcasting Company Radio Network presents Space Patrol! High adventure in the wild vast reaches of space, missions of daring in the name of interplanetary justice. Travel into the future with Buzz Corey, Commander-in-Chief of the Space Patrol! In today's transcribed Space Patrol adventure, Buzz and Happy are exploring the ruins of a lost civilization. Suddenly aware that a man is following them, Buzz pulls Happy into a dark passage. Oh, I can see us stepping in. He can't see us in this dark passage. He'll be standing in here. Come on, the big stone at the entrance. It's moving. He knows we're in here. But no man in the universe could, could move that stone. Waste of time. Not from this universe. Oh, he sealed us in. We're trapped. We'll be back in a moment with today's exciting Space Patrol story, The Crown of Darjeeda. Korean children don't cry. It's a strange thing. Thousands upon thousands of them have been orphaned or cut completely adrift by the war. You see them in every large city, to sleep on sidewalks, in alleys, under bridges, or wandering aimlessly around the streets. Perhaps they're too hungry to cry, or too hopeless, with a terrible childish cynicism. The sight of their bewildered faces, their huddled, ragged figures like little old men and women, is something no one who has seen it can ever forget. There's a chance for you to restore a measure of faith to these forlorn children of Korea. A chance to restore their power to cry. A $10 care parcel will not only help feed one of these children for a month, it may also give him back his youth. Send your order now to CARE, 660 First Avenue, New York 16, or to your local CARE office. <laughs> And now today's Space Patrol adventure, The Crown of Darjeeta. The patient in room 399 of the special confinement ward in the Terra Hospital is causing great concern to Commander Corey. Captured after a violent struggle at the Terra spaceport, he has failed to respond to expert treatment. Although conscious and able to talk, he has refused to reveal his identity or the reason for his attempt to steal a spaceship. Now, in his central office at headquarters, Buzz examines the medical report that Happy has just handed him. Well, the blood sample doesn't fall into any known classification. Uh, we really have got a mystery here. Yes, it's a case where our crime lab may be able to help the doctors. I'll call the identification section and see if they've matched this photograph. The well, we must have a record. If he wasn't trying to hide something, he'd have told us who he was. ID section. This is Commander Corian. You have a report on the subject in bulletin 413-H. See. And you have no matching photograph in the file. Mm -hmm. well, how about fingerprints? Well, you must have. You're certain? All right. Oh, yeah. I can guess the fingerprints aren't in the file. Yes, they are. Happy he has no fingerprints. Huh? Well, it's impossible. The prints are as smooth as mud. No loops, spirals, or scales. In case you may have ever been wearing plastic gloves. Captain Rockets, the guy's a total mystery. Yeah, We've got to give him a brain of that right away and call the hospital. I don't quite get it, sir. What do you mean he's not as big a mystery? Now hold it, Matt. Operator, this is Commander Corey at Space Patrol Headquarters. Put me through to Superintendent Mannheim. This is urgent. Cap. Yes, sir. Contact the security lab. Tell them to set up the brain of... Dr. Mannheim? It's Commander Corey. I've got a theory about our patient in room 399. I think he's from another solar system. I would explain his behavior and also the trouble you've had in treating... Oh, all right, Doctor, go ahead. What? When did this happen? I see. Oh, how is Dr. Kenton? Uh -huh. Well, keep the guard at 399. I'll be right over. Corey out. After the patient escaped. What? The nurse found Dr. Kenton lying dazed on the floor, covered with a sheet. The patient had taken the doctor's clothes. So how did he get past the guard? He didn't. The bars in the window were ripped out. Captain Rocket. I'll alert the spaceport. I'm going to get over to the hospital. Behind locked doors in a small apartment in another part of Terra, a man sits before a spaceophone transmitter, beaming a signal toward a remote part of space. Agent Orkan calling Chardu of Darjeeda. Agent Orkan calling Chardu of Darjeeda. This is Chardu. Why are you late in reporting, Orkan? I met with a slight accident, Chardu. I was captured and confined to a hospital. Fortunately, I was able to escape. Uh, Crown, have you located it? The jeweled town of Darjeeda is hidden on the third natural planet of the solar system. A 
planet called Earth. My ancestors lost the rule of Daijida a thousand years ago when the crown was stolen. For ten centuries we have been outcasts under the control of despots. The return of the crown will mean that I will become emperor of all Daijida. So much at stake. I cannot risk failure. I won't fail. Very well, Parker. Continue your search. In the headquarters office several hours later, Commander Corey and Cadet Happy go over reports from space control on all ships leaving Terra. Now this one brings us up to date as of five minutes ago, huh? No one using Dr. Cantley's identification has boarded the spaceship since the patient escaped. Uh, sir, I just noticed this report on Dr. Cantley. Uh, why a brain graph test on him? Well, he was so dazed and coherent, I figured it would be a quickest way to get information. What did you find out? Dr. Cantley entered room 399 to examine the patient. As he leaned over the bed... The patient suddenly grabbed the doctor by the throat and held him with incredible strength. Did he get a look at uh, whoever was outside helping the patient escape? There wasn't anyone outside. But the bars. Somebody must have used special tools to tear out those bars in the window. Dr. Kentner saw the patient do it with his bare hands. That's true. That's impossible. Nobody in the entire solar system could bend those bars. You're right, Hap. Nobody in this solar system. Remember the strange blood type. The pattern was fingerprints. Hey, that's right. The serious patient has unusual physical and mental powers. Plainly, he's from another solar system. There may be others like right, him living among us and detect us. Well, what are they like? What are they up to? To find out, they have to capture that man. Uh, if he can bend thick metal bars, it's going to be hard to handle. I'm not worried so much about his physical strength, but his mental power. For instance, he seemed to implant it in Dr. Kepler's mind the impression of Earth Spaceport Number 7. Number 7? Well, uh, that's in the southwestern United States. Yes, New Santa Fe. Yeah, but uh, what's Earthport 7 got to do with the, the man that escaped? Kept showing up in Dr. Kentner's brain again. And it has no significance to the doctor. I'll get it, huh? Commander Corey here. Yes, I did. Well, what was that destination again? I see. That sounds like our man, all right. Thanks. Corey out. Half an hour ago, a passenger ship from Terra landed at Spaceport 7 on the planet Earth. On board was a man who presented the credentials of a doctor Mondano. Oh? Well, this Dr. Madonna made some inquiries about the Sanapi Ruin, about 250 miles to the south of the port. The Sanapi Ruin? According to the medical association, there is no Dr. Madonna. There's a missing patient. You know, Hap, I think it's time we had a vacation. A vacation? Now? Yes. A quiet vacation on Earth, exploring the Sanapi Ruin. Back in the 20th century, jet planes roared over the sun-baked deserts of the American Southwest. But they left no mark on vast regions below. Now the spaceships of the 30th century split the skies with their thunder. But the desert remains unchanged. A surface car roars along a rough dirt road and stops before the only structure in miles. Two men with camera cases slung from their shoulders get out of the car. We could still make the ruins by dark, men. There's only a few miles farther. Well, we might be able to pick up some information here, huh? Besides, I'd like to establish ourselves as tourists. We can get an early start for the ruins in the morning. Mm. Huh, look at this. Hank's Hotel. Indian relics, curios, sandwiches, rooms. I wonder if Hank does much business. I wouldn't think so. Mm. Howdy, folks. Something I can do for you? We were just passing by, and we thought we'd stop in. Oh, well, I'm mighty glad to see you. Don't get many visitors this time of year. Well, when is your busy season? Well, I've been here for ten years. I don't reckon I ever did have what you'd rightly call a busy season. Oh, that's too bad. Oh, no, it ain't. I like it that way. It gives a man time to think. fact is, I'm tired. I get just enough trade here to take the curse out of it. You're tired? From what? If you don't mind my asking. Oh, little everything. Ranching, prospecting, you name it. I managed to save up enough to get by on Anything to take in here is pure velvet. Well, you get the life story of Hank Hodges. You mentioned prospecting. Are you know around here? Yep. And if that's what you fellas are here for, you're wasting your time. <laughs> I'm afraid we haven't the patience for that kind of work, Mr. Hodges. We thought we'd follow around these old Indian ruins and snap a few pictures. Oh, it's not your ruins, huh? Well, I reckon every man's got his own idea of fun. But don't expect too much. Why? Aren't they interested? All I know is the Indians left. <laughs> we'll take our chances. Uh, judging by the lack of traffic in the road just now, we'll find a place for ourselves, I suppose. Ruins, you mean? Yeah, as far as I know. 
You don't calculate going out there tonight, do you? Well, we hadn't quite made up our mind. Well, we'd better wait a morning. The road gives up and quits a few miles from here. You'd get lost. Well, then what are we going to do? Well, did you see the sign outside? This here's a hotel, too. I think it's fancy as those places up at New Santa Fe, but you'd be comfortable. It sounds like a good idea. We'll take you up in that offer, Mr. Hunter. Now you're talking. And, uh, just call me. We'll get our gear out of the car. Come on. Yes, sir. I'll be out to help you in the jiffy. Uh, just remembered I got some coffee perking on the stove in the back room. All right, Mr. Hodges. Agent Torzak calling Shardu of Darjeeda. Agent Torzak, code name Hodges, calling Shardu. This is Shardu. Proceed with your report, Torzak. Two men are here, on the way to the Zanapi ruins. I'm sure they're space patrolmen, after Agent Orkan. You have your orders. Dispose of them. It would be awkward here. I would be suspected. Follow them to the ruins. Orkan must be protected from all interference in his search for the crown of Dajida. Rest assured, Jardu. The space patrolmen will never leave the ruins of Zanapi. We'll return to Space Patrol in just a moment. The United States has seen many changes in the past dozen years, all pointing to a still better way of living. Millions more Americans are working, earning more, saving more. We're eating more and eating better. More young people are going to high school and college. More of us are getting paid vacations. More of us are enjoying the luxuries of life. Sports, radio, television, the theater, concerts. Church attendance and membership has climbed steadily upward. The better you know America, the better the future looks. Write for the free booklet, The Future of America. Box 1776, Grand Central Station, New York, 17. Now back to today's Space Patrol adventure, The Crown of Darjeeda. Commander Corey and Cadet Happy are in the southwest desert region of America, searching for a patient who escaped from the special confinement ward of the Terra Hospital. The patient's unusual physical and mental powers lead Buzz to believe that the man is from another solar system. Buzz and Happy spent the night at a lonely roadside hotel in Curio Shop, operated by a genial gentleman who calls himself Hank Hodges. The space patrollers don't know it, but Hodges is also from another solar system. Now Buzz and Happy are in their surface car, ready to leave for the Zunapi ruins. I remember now, uh, follow the road that runs out, then keep going, you come to the Red Beach. Cut right and follow the dry voice. You end up at the end. You'll find it, Hank. See you later, Hank. Go on, fellas. And watch out for the rattlesnakes. The surface car designed for rough terrain moves easily across the desert through rocky arroyos and deep sand. Following Hank Hodges' direction, Buzz and Happy wind along the bank of a dry riverbed for several miles. Then Buzz suddenly plunges down the sloping side of a ravine and brings the car to a stop under overhanging brush. We'll cover the rest of the way on foot, Hank. It's only a couple of miles to the ruins. Yes, sir. On foot, we'll have a better chance of taking the fake Dr. Modano by surprise. Let's see. Uh, we'll need the cameras, canteens, and our guns. And keep the guns concealed, Hank. And bring two atomic lights to keep at the bottom of the ground. Commander, this is a regular city. Yes. According to Sterndorf, there are thousands of yards of hidden passages. Sterndorf? Who's he? An archaeologist who did some exploring here a few years ago. You tell him? Pat, get behind this pillow. Did you see me? Yes, sir. So I found a lot of it. Came out of hands Better get out of sight. I think it's one of those passages I'm watching. It's one of those planes up with a big stone. Severe right there. He knows we're in here. Yeah, but no man in the universe could move that stone. He'd waste time. He's not from this universe. He sealed us in. We're trapped. Just one end is sealed. Maybe another. Switch on your tomahawk light. Let's find out. Yes, sir. Okay. 
Okay, come on. Another time. Let's hope this time it pays off. Oh, a dead end. Oh my gosh! Oh, take it easy. It's just a statue. You nearly scared the life out of me, sir. A tunnel like put a right square in the place. It is startling. An ancient idol holding a sword and outstretched arm. Oh, I guess we're really fixed this time. A big stone at one end of the passage, and old double ugly at this one. Expression and attitude of that statue. It's like it was guarding something. What is there to guard? Just a blank wall. It's not the Indians that are too intelligent to go to this much work without a reason. A reason might not make sense to us, but the idol is stone, but well, the sword is real. Hey, hey, I wonder if I can look at loose from that stone fist. and make a dandy souvenir. Yeah, souvenir. That's the last thing we need now. Heavy. Hmm? It's not just me when you pull it that sword. Yeah, I guess old double ugly was falling apart from me. <laughs> Open rockets, what's happening? Part of the wall is swinging back. You found the way out of the passage. You know, I figured that statue must have a purpose. There wouldn't be any sense of it just standing here. Same goes for us. Come on, through that door. Now stop, turn the button. Yes, sir. I saw another man up ahead. Go take it instead. All right, get your hands up. It's him, Commander, the escape patient. Yes, Commander Corey. I hardly expected to see you. You wanted it to be a surprise. I'm glad to see that you've recovered. Now, if you lead us out of here, we'll take you back to Terra. And why to Terra? For attempting to steal a spaceship, assaulting a guard and Dr. Kettner, and for impersonating a physician. And just how do you know I am not a physician? I'd also like to go into the matter of why you're in this solar system in the first place. You've figured that out, have you? I suppose my tearing out the bars of the hospital window gave you a clue. Yeah, and rolling that big rock in front of the passage. Rock? What rock? Oh, well, uh, maybe a butterfly landed on it and tipped it off balance. Oh, the rock. Yeah, there is no use pretending anymore, I suppose. My name is Orkan. I am from the planet in the Antares system. The planet Darjida. I suppose there are others among us than Darjida. I am not that liberty to answer that. The brainograph will tell us. Gentlemen, you might as well put down those puny weapons. Stay where you are, Orton. One more step and you will be sound asleep from a charge of cosmic rays. <laughs> you will find that you are unable to pull the trigger to me. All right. <laughs> it's just a trick of concentration, gentlemen. We of Darjita have developed to control our minds. This self-mastery gives us power over less disciplined races such as yourself. We call it psych force. Why didn't you use it on the guard at the space plane? Huh? It was taken by surprise. It takes a few seconds of relaxation and concentration to build it up. But fortunately, before the guard, I didn't even have time to build up my reserve of physical energy. I will never would have captured me. But the strength of yours isn't natural. <laughs> it is an acquired skill. And our Jida we've been training as very small children. We have centuries of knowledge and technique behind us. Now, I want some information. I came here to find a jeweled crown that was stolen from our Jida centuries ago and hidden here in the Zunapi ruins. Where is it? I never heard of the jeweled crown. I know where it is. Many relics have been removed from this cave, Commander. You are going to tell me who would have this information. I don't know. I'm a space patroller, not an archaeologist. Oh. It is in your mind, isn't it? The name of someone you might know about the crown of that view. Who is this archaeologist? I won't tell you. There's no telling what you do. I would do anything to get that crown. Your foolish little laws against 
lies with nothing to eat them out. Come on, tell me. His name is. I can't tell. Stone. Howard Stone. And where is he? Venus. Don't fight it for me. You are creating an inner mental struggle that can harm you. Where is Stone? I want him. He was blacked out, but he will be all right. Cadet, take him up. Carry him over your shoulder and follow me. Only dimly aware of what he is doing, Happy obeys Orkhan's command, following the man from Darjita through a corridor and out into the bright sunlight. Then he loses all sense of time. Finally, out of a blackness comes a vaguely familiar voice. Son? Son, are you awake? Happy opens his eyes and finds himself lying on a bed in a plainly furnished room. A familiar room. Lying beside him is Commander Corey. Again, the voice. Son, I brought you and your buddy something that'll make you feel better. Hey, I want to get back to the hotel. Well, your friend bought both of you here in his surface car. Friend? Yes, Dr. Mordana. He's outside now loading some supplies into the car. You fellas had a bad case of heat stroke. Lucky the doc came along. Mm-hmm. Listen, I've got to tell you something. He isn't a doctor. He's a criminal. And what's yeah, more... Yeah, sure, he... sure. Now, you just relax, son. I'll, I'll leave these two glasses of water here. Uh, when your pal wakes up, uh, see that he gets a drink, too. You don't believe me. I never had heat stroke. It's that fake doctor. He's from another sure, solar... Sure, sure, son. You just take it easy. Hey, look, I- I've got to get a message to some friends. Will you let me use your space phone? Space phone? What in thunder would I need a space phone for? You know, the way I figure, if a man ain't worth talking to face-to-face, he ain't worth talking to at all. Space phones. Ah, bunch of nonsense. Okay, but listen, Hank, be careful of that stranger. Don't tell him I said anything about him. He's dangerous. I'll be careful. Now, don't you worry about a thing. Everything's going to be all right. Nice plan, huh? Yeah. You okay? Yeah. I didn't tell him we were space patrollers. He'd be convinced we were crazy. I think we could only find some weapons. The trouble is, I can hardly move. I don't know what Orkhan did to me, but... I... Hey, what happened? I'm all right. So now, Orkhan must have suddenly relaxed his sight for us. Let's take a look at him to see what he's up to. There he is. He's loading stuff into his car. And Hank's helping him. Let him see us. Uh-huh. And we got the weapons. I'm going to make sure Hodges isn't in the way. Mm-hmm. But I don't believe it. Instead of driving the car around, he just lifts up the back end, swings it over like I'd move a small desk. A little dried up man like Hodges. I have a feeling that if we examined those glasses of water you brought here, we wouldn't find him. Huh? You mean Hodges? Is that he's from Darjita too? Yes. I bet it was Hodges who rolled that rock across the passage back at the room. Oh, I come to think of it. What kind of seemed surprised when we mentioned it? I think we took the blame so we wouldn't suspect Hodges. I'll get busy outside to look for weapons. Should be someone hangs back in the car. Hurry, happy before Hodges comes back. Yes, sir. Smoke and rockets, a space phone. And he said he didn't have one. Yeah, clinches it. Happy, look around for weapons. I'll contact Terra headquarters and have them warn Sterndorf at Venus City University. No, no, I hear someone coming. Okay, I'll just come. I just know Hodges keeps his voice. Shadu, you will be wearing the crown as emperor of Darjeeling. Excellent. Keep me informed of all developments. Yes, Shadu. 
for it. I'll get him, Hap. Nice work, Commander. On your feet. You ought to be ashamed hitting an old man. An old man who can roll a two-ton rock and lift a surface car. You're not as old as you pretend. You better tie him up, Commander. The bottle hold him. Bring him a glass of water, Hap. Huh? One of the glasses he wanted us to wear. Now, now, fellas, you, you got me all wrong. Oh, you can stop acting now, Hodges. The curtain's gone down on your little scene. And we're sure you're under control. We're going after your pal, Orko. What about Chardu's crown? It's rightfully his as emperor. He's not our emperor. And if he doesn't respect our laws, well, he's just going to have to rule bareheaded. And I hope he catches cold. We'll have a preview of next week's exciting Space Patrol adventure in just a moment. Young men, today's army can prepare you for success. It can help you to a better future with valuable job training, opportunities for travel, and the chance to show your ability as a leader. The Army now offers training in over 30 career fields in everything from auto mechanics to guided missiles and electronics. Here you can learn a trade that will pay you well for the rest of your life. And of course, you'll be paid while you learn. And you'll get a 30-day leave with pay every year. So serve your country and yourself in the new United States Army. See your local Army recruiter today. He's listed in the phone book. Now a preview of next week's exciting Space Patrol adventure. Buzz and Happy are aboard the Telephone, approaching the planet Venus. We're on vector for Venus City atmosphere shell, sir. Fine, Happy. What our velocity? Yes, sir. Let us pray. Controls will respond. There's a warning from space control. Decelerate quick. I can't, sir. Nothing happened. By changing vector. The controls are frozen. Someone sabotaged the ship. Or come. Oh, but not if you don't do something quick, the ship will crash right into the heart of Venus City. <laughs> Be with us next week for the thrilling Space Patrol story, The Shadow of Chardu. Space Patrol, created by Mike Moser, starring Ed Kemmer as Commander Corey and Lynn Osborne as Cadet Happy, was written by Lou Houston, produced and directed by Larry Robertson, executive producer Helen Moser. Other players were Tom McKee, Norm Jolly, and Ken Mayer. Lee Zimmer speaking. This program is broadcast to our armed forces overseas through the worldwide facilities of the Armed Forces Radio Service. Space Patrol came to you transcribed from Hollywood. This is ABC Radio Network.